Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson. Today's topic is buying and selling used items and you may wonder how I come up with these topics. Well, sometimes they're related to my life. Currently, I'm in the process of selling some used items, used farm equipment actually and so as I went through my week, I thought this would make a great English lesson. Sometimes it's nice to buy things that are brand new. Sometimes it's nice to buy things at a store or at a car dealership but if you wanna save money, it can be just as enjoyable if not more enjoyable to buy things used. I'm sure in your country, there are various ways to find used items. Things that other people bought new and they are now selling after using them for a while. So, welcome once again to this English lesson about buying and selling used items. I think you will really, really enjoy it. So, there is a person called a buyer and there is a person called a seller and I know this is basic English vocabulary but I wanted to start the lesson by explaining this. If you don't have a car and you have money, you would say, I want to buy a car. If you have a car and you don't really need it anymore or maybe you want to buy a different car, you would say, I want to sell my car. The person who is looking for a car, the person who wants to buy a car is called a buyer. The person who wants to sell their car is called the seller. So, in the world of used items, you have buyers and you have sellers and buyers and sellers find each other through a variety of ways and I'll talk about those a bit later in the lesson. But let me just recap for a second. What do I mean by used items? I mentioned it a little earlier in my introduction. A used item is something that isn't new anymore. Let's say that I buy a guitar brand new. If I sell that guitar a year later, we would say it is a used guitar. It's not new anymore. It's now used. So, this lesson will be about buyers and sellers of used items. So, I won't be talking about stores uh, or any of the places where you buy brand new things but I'll be talking about used. When you want something, we say that you are looking for something. You could say, my brother is looking for a, a used car. My brother is looking for a used guitar. So, if you know someone who wants to buy something, we use the verb phrase to look for to talk about that action. Right now, I am looking for another mower. So, I want to buy one. So, anyone who wants to buy something, we would say that they are looking for that item. They're not searching for it. It's not like they lost it and they're going to look for it because we use that verb uh, then as well. If I lose my keys, then I look for my keys but if I want to buy a used guitar, you would say, oh, Bob's looking for a used guitar. Oh, are you selling your guitar? Bob's looking for a used guitar. Listing or posting. So, I mentioned that there are a variety of ways that buyers and sellers find each other. One of the ways is when the seller will put a listing or posting on a website. This has become this has become the most common way for buyers and sellers to meet um, for buyers to find out what people are selling. It used to be things like a classified ad in a newspaper or people would put posters up around town, you know, car for sale but now people will instead put a listing or a posting on the internet. I have a few pieces of farm equipment for sale so I have listed them on the internet. I have a listing where people can find the items I have for sale. And the places in North America, particularly, oh, sorry, my bad, particularly in my area, is to use something called Kijiji. This is a very Canadian website. I think many countries have the same thing. I know, um, in France, it's Le Bon Coin, I think. Freddie Wolf is mentioning that in the chat. The Good Corner, Le Bon Coin. In Canada, we use Kijiji but we also use Facebook Marketplace. I think in the United States, they use Craigslist and eBay a little bit more. All of these are websites where you can post or you can list what you have for sale. So, you'll see some postings here for computers. You'll see some listings here for computers. Uh, let's see here. 
If you want to sell something the old fashioned way, you might go and buy a for sale sign. So, this is a sign that you can buy at almost any store in Canada and it's it's literally called a for sale sign. If you walked in, you could say, where are the for sale signs? I need to sell my motorcycle. And then you put the item you have for sale close to a street in front of your house and you put the for sale sign on it so that people know that that item is for sale. Um I don't have a for sale sign on the equipment I have for sale but maybe I should do that. I should go get a for sale sign today and put one of the pieces of equipment close to the road. So, we use this verb structure when we talk about selling something. We say that you're going to put it up for sale. I don't need my motorcycle anymore. I'm going to put it up for sale. I don't need my bicycle anymore. I'm going to put it up for sale. Or you could even shorten it and say, yeah, my bike's up for sale right now. So, basically, that means that you most likely have put a for sale sign on it but you certainly are eager to sell it. You hope that someone will buy it from you. And let's talk about some of the other unique terms. When you have a listing, you usually put an asking price. An asking price is kind of the starting point for what you will pay. The asking price for this drill is ten dollars. The person has said that they want ten dollars for it. But here's something very interesting about buying and selling used items. In Canada, when you buy something in a store, the price on the item is what you pay. You can't ask to pay lower or negotiate a better price. In a store, you pay the sticker price. You pay the price that it is uh, that is on the item. But when you buy and sell used items, the price is negotiable. So, this person, I could call and say, I see you're asking ten dollars. Will you take eight dollars? If someone is selling a car and the asking price is five thousand dollars, you could call and say, hey, I see you're asking five thousand dollars. Will you take four thousand five hundred or will you take forty five hundred? So, the asking price is kind of the starting point for that particular sale. Sometimes, people will not put a price on they'll just say price negotiable. So, if I put my bicycle at the road and I put a for sale sign on it and I said price negotiable, it means someone can just come and say, I'll give you ten dollars for that bike or I'll give you fifty dollars for that bike and it means that I just want some money for it but we can talk and figure out what price is appropriate. At the same time, we have a phrase called make an offer. Sometimes people will sell something and instead of saying the drill for example was ten dollars, it the person could have just said drill for sale, make an offer and basically what they're saying is I'm not sure what this is worth. Tell me what you think you would be willing to pay for it and we can negotiate. So, make an offer is a common phrase in those situations. When you sell a used item, you usually want to talk about the condition that it is in and there are a number of ways to describe the condition of something. Um this is a farm piece of farm equipment called a plow. This is actually the plow I'm selling and if someone was to say, hey, Bob, I'm interested in buying your plow. What condition is it in? I would say, well, it's in good condition. It's a little bit rusty. It's actually really rusty. Um and there are a few things wrong with it and but other than that, it's in pretty good shape. So, it's any time you describe the state or what the item looks like. This plow, I would say, is in good condition um, but it needs a little bit of work. So, when you buy a car or when you sell a car, someone might say, well, what condition is it in? And you could say, oh, it's in excellent condition. I just had an oil change. Um it gets really good gas mileage. Um there's no rust on the car. You would describe what the car looks like and how it operates. So, used. We just use the word used to talk about anything that isn't new. If you buy a car and drive it home, that car is now used. For a while, you will call it your new car but in reality, if you wanted to sell it, you would say that it is used. You can see here there is a used computer for sale. 
that means that uh, someone bought this new but now it is being sold again. That's a good price by the way. I'm not sure what computer it is but $50 for a computer sounds pretty good to me. Of course, it is used. It might be four years old. It might be five years old. We also use the term second hand. Now, for me, when I talk about something that's second hand, I almost always talk about clothing or furniture. When I talk about vehicles like motorcycles or cars, I use the word used. When I talk about computers, used. It's a used computer but we don't use used when we talk about clothes. We usually say second hand. I bought some second hand clothes. Um although we do say used clothing store or thrift store. I'll talk about that in a bit but generally used is for machines and items and second hand is more for things like oh, it's a second hand couch. It's a used couch. They're kind of interchangeable I guess. I'm changing my mind on this one but second hand is definitely another way to describe something that isn't new. So, a few more ways to describe the condition of something. So, you could say something is like new or as good as new. You can see in this ad here, someone is selling a watch and it says right here, like new, Samsung Galaxy watch. So, open box simply means that the box has been opened. That someone probably actually used this watch at some point but there's no scratches on it. Maybe they wore it once or twice and the watch still looks like how it would look if you just bought it. So, you would describe it as saying like new or as good as new. It's nice to buy things that are used that are like new or as good as new. We also have this way of describing it. You could say brand new, never been used or still in the box. This would mean something that someone bought and they never actually used it. So, maybe you bought a camera and you took it home and you opened the box and looked at it and you never actually used it. You would describe it as saying brand new or never been used or it's very common to say still in the box which means that you never really actually used it. So, you can see in this ad here, this person selling I think another computer brand new still in the box. So, basically, they're saying, hey, I bought this but I never used it at all. You have to trust the person uh, to be telling the truth in that situation. Now, we also have a little phrase as is. Uh, in Canada and in the United States, when you buy something and it says as is, it might not even work. So, if you were to see a car for sale and it says as is, it usually means there's something wrong with it. They'll usually tell you. They'll say, hey, we're selling this car as is. Um it has a funny sound when you hit the brakes or we're selling this car as is. It has a dent in the side. We're selling this computer as is. It turns on but it shuts off after 10 minutes. So, when you buy something as is, you know There's something wrong with it. You know there's a problem. They'll usually tell you what they think it is but it's just a way of saying, hey, this is used and it's a little bit broken but you might be able to fix it. Uh which brings me to another phrase. We have the phrase needs some TLC. When you sell something and you say needs some TLC, TLC stands for tender loving care. Usually what this means is it's not broken but it might not look great or there might be a couple things wrong with it. If you bought this tractor and if it said needs some TLC, what that means is it needs to be painted. Uh it maybe needs an oil change. Maybe there's a couple small things that need to be fixed. You would simply say needs some TLC. Needs some tender loving care. And then we have the condition for parts. So, when you buy something and it says for parts, it really means that this doesn't work but some of the parts are still good. So, this truck maybe could be for sale for parts. You can see the front end is smashed up but the doors are still good. It looks like the tires are still good. Even parts of the engine might still be good. So, if I had the same truck but I needed some parts. I might buy this truck to fix my truck because this truck would be really, really cheap because they're selling it for parts. So, when you buy something for parts, 
You're literally buying it because you want the parts that are in it. Whenever you sell something or when you are looking for something, when you're looking to buy something, the listing or posting will have a description. The description is just some more information. So, here's a couch for sale. The asking price is a hundred dollars and it says comfortable seven foot couch available for pickup before Friday, July 29th at noon near Young and Davisville. By the way, this is an actual ad. If you need a couch and you are near Young and Davisville today, you could buy this couch. It's a beautiful couch it looks like. But yes, when you sell something, there is usually um a spot where you can write a small description of it. And then we have um when people start to express interest. So, let's say I was selling um a guitar. We'll use that example again. I would put a listing on Kijiji or Craigslist or eBay or Facebook Marketplace or Le Bon Coin if I was in France. Um and then you might get a few you might get some interest. You might get some inquiries. You might get a few nibbles. This is what we would call people showing interest. Is this item still available? Yes. Okay. Can I call text you? Please give your phone number. By the way, that's not proper English. It's a, it should be please give me your phone number or please tell me your phone number. Um this me if you put a listing online and no one inquires, that's not a good thing. But usually when you put something online for sale, you'll have a few nibbles. You'll have a few inquiries. You'll have some interest shown. By the way, nibble comes from fishing. When you're fishing and sometimes the fish will nibble on the bait. So, we use the word nibble when talking about buying and selling as well. And let's talk a little bit about to make an offer, to accept an offer and to make a counter offer. So, these two gentlemen are negotiating a price. So, the person says, Hmm. And then the other person says, I'll give you fifty dollars for it. So, the person on the left is offering. He's making an offer. He's he said to his wife maybe, I'm gonna go make an offer on the uh, guitar. I'm going to offer him fifty dollars. So, he's making an offer. I'll give you fifty dollars for it. The other guy says, hmm. And then maybe he thinks that's great. He says, you've got yourself a deal. And the other guy says, awesome. Or you could say, sounds good or That's great. Fifty dollars sounds good. Uh but you could also counter offer. So, he says, I'll give you fifty dollars for it and the other guy says, how about sixty dollars? Maybe the asking price is seventy dollars. The first person says, I'll give you fifty dollars for it. He makes an offer and the other guy makes a counter offer. How about sixty dollars? And maybe they'll meet somewhere in the middle. So, To make an offer means to say, I will pay you this much for your item. To accept an offer would be to say, that amount sounds good. I'll take it. The item is yours. Or a counter offer would be to kind of negotiate the price. Um we have another little phrase when something is for sale and it's the phrase OBO which stands for or best offer. If I was selling, I have to think of something else to sell. I've I've been uh, I'm selling um a couch and if I said five hundred dollars or best offer, it means that I'm asking for five hundred dollars but I'm willing to negotiate quite a bit and if I get a number of offers, if someone says, I'll give you four hundred, I'll give you four twenty, I'll give you three eighty, then after a few days, I'll call the person who offered four twenty and say, look, you're the best offer so it's yours if you want it. So, Usually when someone says or best offer, it means they're willing to negotiate on the price. Now, the opposite would be to be firm on the price. So, you can see here someone selling uh, some Prada glasses. Price, firm. Here's someone selling a 10 carat gold bracelet and it says price, firm. When someone says they are firm on the price, it means that's the price they want. If you called the person with the sunglasses and said, I'll give you seventy dollars if you were to make an offer, they would say, no, I'm firm at eighty dollars. I want eighty dollars for it. So, it means the person is not willing to negotiate and then sometimes people will list something and they don't get very many inquiries. There's not very much interest. They don't get any nibbles. And so, they would they decide, oh, it's time to reduce the price. When something is reduced, 
if you look over at the price there, it means they were asking $150. The asking price was $150 but they've decided to instead ask for $125. So, it's reduced. This little fireplace is now only $125. By the way, this is still for sale. This is from yesterday. If you're in Toronto and you want a little fireplace, it's $125. And sometimes people don't actually want to sell their item. They would be willing to trade their item as well. So, this car is for sale for $6,500. We would just say $6,500 but if you look down here, you'll see contact Paul or trade for trailer, four by four truck, ATV, lawn tractor. So, instead of giving him money, if you have a big truck for sale or a trailer, He's willing to trade. He'll give you his car if you give him his trailer. Um by the way, also it says here low ballers will be ignored. A low baller is someone who offers a really really low price. If you called this person and said, I'll give you $1,000 for that car, we would say you are low balling him or you are a low baller and so he's basically saying, don't call me if you're only going to offer me one or two thousand dollars. I would like something closer to sixty five hundred but also he will trade for any of those other items. He's willing to trade. When you list something for sale, sometimes people will give the reason why they're selling it. This is a way to let the person know why you're getting rid of it, why you're selling it so that they trust you a bit more. This person says, I'm selling because I bought a bigger boat. So, you know then if you trust the person, he's not selling it because it doesn't work. He's not selling it because there's a hole in it. He's selling it because he bought a bigger boat and he doesn't need this small boat anymore. Actually, for me, that would be a big boat but he bought a bigger boat so he doesn't need it. So, he has given a reason. I have farm equipment for sale. In my ads, I said, no longer need this equipment. My neighbors are doing my farm work for me, okay? So, I'm giving a reason why I'm selling something to assure the potential buyer that it's still a good item. Uh sometimes we'll say something is a bargain or a steal or a deal. Uh by the way, the verb to steal means to take something without paying. But when you say something is a steal, you mean that you don't pay a lot of money for it. If you saw this car and the asking price was $500, you would say that's a real bargain. That's a steal. That's a deal. You would be really happy to pay that much money for that car. Now, I think maybe that's actually a toy car. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Um sometimes you describe the price as steep. So, if the person instead wanted five million dollars for this car, you would say that's too steep. That's a steep price for that car. That means you think the person is asking for too much money. You think that it is too expensive. When a buyer and seller agree on a price, we say that you've closed the deal. So, tomorrow I hope, no, Monday I think I'm going to close the deal on another piece of farm equipment. I think someone might come and buy it. So, then we will shake hands. People still shake hands when they close a deal. It's nice that um the pandemic isn't as bad right now. You can shake hands with people but that's how you close a deal. When the buyer and seller agree on a price, we say that you are going to close the deal. Sometimes when you try to sell something, there's not a lot of demand for that item. So, here picture this. If I tried to sell a snowblower right now in the middle of the summer, there's not a lot of demand. We use the word demand to describe how many people are interested in buying something. In the summer, there's not a lot of demand for snowblowers but in the winter, there's a lot of demand for snowblowers. I have a snowblower that I might sell but I'm going to wait till late fall because there'll be more demand. Nobody wants a snowblower right now. But I sold my lawnmower yesterday or a mower yesterday because there's a lot of demand for mowers right now because the grass is growing. Sometimes people will say that they'll pay you cash. When you sell something used, people usually pay by check. The most common way to pay now is with an e-transfer. So, they transfer money directly from their bank. 
But sometimes people will say, give you $3,000 cash for that car or I'll give you $2,000 cash because cash still has a bit more of an appeal to people. Um it's easier to um not report your earnings if you sell something for cash. And then just a couple places where you can buy used things but places that aren't exactly the same as buying it from one person. So, a garage sale or lawn sale or yard sale. There's three words by the way. Is when you put a bunch of things on your front lawn on a Saturday morning usually and people come and they buy things from you. You put your asking price on everything with a sticker. People will make an offer. They'll say, oh, I see you want $20 for this table. Will you take 15? You make an offer but a lawn sale, garage sale, yard sale is a place where you um a time when you sell items on your front lawn to people who are driving around on a Saturday looking for deals. We also have stores called thrift stores or secondhand stores. Some people just uh will call it by its name. Here we have a store called Value Village and we have a store called Goodwill. But a thrift store is a place that um sells used clothing. They sell secondhand clothing. They sell all kinds of things that have been used um by the previous owner. So, uh thrift store shopping is something that teenagers really like to do. They like to look for name brand clothing at thrift stores so that they can get a real deal. If you can find something made by Prada in a thrift store, it's probably a steal. It's probably a good deal. And I'm going to end with a couple buying and selling phrases that make me smile. One is the phrase when something is too good to be true. So, if you did actually find this car somewhere and if you told your friend, I saw a Lamborghini. That is a Lamborghini, right? Yes. I saw a Lamborghini and it's only $500. Your friend would probably say that's too good to be true. And what they mean by that is there's gotta be something wrong with this car. There must be something broken. There has to be a reason. It can't be a perfectly good car. That would be too good to be true. And then the other phrase is the phrase you get what you pay for. So, let's say this tractor is normally $20,000 and I buy it for $10,000 and then the wheel falls off. Because I paid so much less than what people would normally charge for it, we would use that phrase. Well, you get what you pay for. So, when you pay well below the asking price and something breaks quickly, we often will say, hey, you get what you pay for. Basically, meaning, well, you didn't pay enough for it. So, there had to be something wrong with it. 